Hello, my name is Andrew Brooks. Another presentation of nonlinear existentialism, philosophy and uncertainty. Redefining the troubled and broken landscape of philosophy. The purpose of this presentation is just to give a little bit more definition, a little bit more defined descriptions of the terms that have been used before, and to reinterpret some of them that are currently used so as to bring more elements into the system so that there are no outliers and the terms that are commonly used in different sciences can be used together and also determine why some terms are misinterpreted in different sciences. So the first one here is everything is basically driven by energy. I'm defining energy as a change which occurs in the state of a medium. Basically, uh, you have a medium, whatever that medium is, and you have some type of change which uh, passes through it. Similar to Herculatus, where he was saying everything flows, nothing stands still, his idea of flux. If there's no flux, there's no energy, and as you can see from existence, that which emits and or accepts energy. So if you have something that cannot produce any form of energy or accept any form of energy, it does not exist. Existence uh, previously was given as a general definition, this one specific specifically, of course, to the nervous system, and it can also be more specifically the centralized nervous system, a uh, highly developed system in the human being. What we have here is that we have an external interface, energy hits that external interface, which is basically the perimeter of the outside of the, the body, uh, the senses, of course, and that energy is transformed and moves to the body and does whatever uh, whatever is going to be dictated by the parameters of the sensory organs and whatever is connected to the sensory organs. So in this one we have, as it passes through, it produces a pattern, logical patterns, and have uh, their associated levels of stimulation, which is a change, and affects the current levels of stimulation with the, the nervous system. So you have a pattern, you have stimulation that's going to be associated with a pattern, and with that it's compared to the stimulation that's currently happening in the nervous system, and you have an outcome based on that. So existence, the type of stimulation which the system is affected by and by which its permutations of it are built upon is delimited by the physical limitations and sensor organs connected to the nervous system. This is important to note because uh, philosophers in the past have argued back and forth about what can we know uh, external to us and in fact is there actually something that's external to us. But on this one, if we agree that there is an outside and inside, which will be discussed in another presentation, that uh, we have information or energy that plays upon the external and causes a reaction to it, and that information comes inside. However, what is delimiting that information is going to be the sensory organs. So, uh, and also, based on different information coming in, has been talked about before many times in this series of nonlinear existentialistic uh, presentations is there needs for temporal binding of the information. If not, uh, the system will not be able to work. And because of this temporal binding, there's going to be other attributes, secondary traits, which are imbued because of that process. And this has been discussed before, but we brought again the idea of standards, which could be also referred to as truth. A quantity uh, is going to be a standard that is readily measurable and is primarily determined by an external uh, environment. And you have quality, which is more towards a reflection of the systems that have been discussed before, uh, the B1B, how it does amplitude and frequency modulation. Uh, a standard that is not readily measurable and is not primarily determined by the external environment. This is important. This is going to be the chaotic, uh, what is referred to as a chaotic system with an individual that um, allows for variations in the signal that comes in. So it's going to be a quality. A human being, based on these previous definitions, is that which has existence or does exist and possesses at least the minimal level of quantity and quality, quantity being uh, sensory inputs, making primary patterns, and quality which will be variations of these patterns uh, to differentiate itself from the external environment and is aware of such a difference when interacting with the external environment. So not just um, having quality and quality, it's going to be when it uh, comes to a certain level of complexity that uh, there's going to be awareness, the awareness of the quality, more of the quality 
you need the quantity in order to get the quality. The quality is going to be ones that then there's going to be enough difference between the external and internal. Making your own standards, your own values, uh, the values uh, that are imbued by quality, and you're aware of uh, these differences. Metaphysics, a being's awareness of its own possible levels of quality, quantity and quality, and how this awareness is important. Uh, and how this awareness and the continuous interaction between such levels, of levels can and does shape its reaction with the with and definition of external and internal environments. So, uh, as the individual changes because energy itself is coming in, and this changes its quantity and quality, that uh, the differences and conflicts, of course, can uh, cause a certain amount of disparity and also joy within the individual and how they try to rectify any differences between the two. Uh, metaphysics, this knowledge in, re in resulting congruencies, residual created by it, often creates in the current uncertainty in the person's value systems. Pattern-based uncertainty as a pair to system-based uncertainty can be reduced if there is a shift from quality to quantity. This shift can lead to concepts being developed by the person that appear to be beyond met their own corporeal existence because the standard is external to the person. In other words, the standard can ultimately become measurable what a quantity is. The person will often resist the change. The change is going to be basically that uh, the variations that the person has enjoyed, which they are, uh, and these play out more and more with the residual because with instantaneous incongruencies, this is um, a reflection of the primary V1B. Uh, the variation is created by that, but the residual, of course, is going to be instantaneous and congruency play across the standards that are coming into them and the residual or the outcome of that. If those are within the system, it's going to be hard for the individual to shift away from uh, more quality based or quantity based because at first they didn't have the standards to um, find the most efficient way of doing things, which is more quantity based if the standards external to the individual are of such uh, the higher standard. But the play back and forth upon that, anytime there's going to be change, especially change that has been with an individual for most of life, it's going to be difficult. And you get the idea that uh, going away from uh, themselves is going to give the sense of that they're going away from physicality towards a medical, uh, meta or beyond physical existence. But in truth, it's actually the exact opposite. But they're going to get that uh, feeling of being beyond because of, of that shift or and sometimes a conflict. So uncertainty, this is very important on that one. It's been mentioned before. It occurs when the external and internal conditions leading up to an outcome, neurological pattern, and associated levels of neuronal excitation are in such a state of change that the specific probability of a certain outcome occurring cannot be predetermined with a definable degree of accuracy based on those conditions. Furthermore, the more uncertainty there is in the person's nervous system, the less likely it will acquire cerebral excitation and more anxiety, more anxious they will uh, will be anxiety is more of a, 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 a psychological term, but uh, uncertainty and anxiety kind of play upon each other. It just depends on how you define them. But the processes under underlying them are, are basically the same. So you got two types of uncertainty: you got system-based, which is uh, non-specific instantaneous incongruency, and thought, which is internal, and then pattern-based or specific. These are going to be with, with the idea of a pattern, so residual incongruencies and thought. It could be external and internal based on if you've got an external pattern, you bring it in and it disagrees with the patterns that are even set inside. Again, you're going to have uncertainty because of that. Philosophy. The gist of the uh, philosophy is that it concentrates more on quality. It's going to be uh, basing itself more on uncertainty. And uncertainty itself is only understood uh, based on what it's uncertain about. So, a lot of times, the systems that we have of philosophy are very are hard to understand because people, philosophers, are cons considering it's uncertainty and they they do not know, they have difficulty trying to system, be systematic about something which is not systematic. It's only way uh, that you have a variation in something that you can actually talk about the variation. So this is, this is kind of the crux of philosophy is that a lot of philosophers probably aware of the uncertainty. Of course, um, one of the most famous is going to be Jean-Paul Sartre, uh, his idea of nothingness. In a way, it is nothingness, but it's playing upon something which 
has existence of quantity. So the thing is that he he's aware of this, it appears in his writing, but had difficulty of, uh, of trying to define it, because in some ways it cannot be defined. Same thing that happened with Descartes with um, his idea of uh, two types of, uh, of existence, existence which we're aware of, and existence which is not, we're not aware of. It's trying to define something that appears in some ways to be indefinable. And that's why I bring up the idea of, of def trying to define existence and, and these other terms so the thing is they can understand that uh, it is in fact a process and it can only be understood as a process when it's compared to something else. So this is uh, another way of looking at philosophy is that in the non-physiological study of how internal non-specific uncertainty quality created by nonlinear electrical patterns and their associated levels of excitation as produced by the activities in the neurophysiological process explains the human condition. And that's the problem is that because it's from a non-physiological -physi point of view, it, it cannot possibly try to determine something that's indeterminable in its uh, system, the system being non-biological. Uh, psychology, it works better, it's more consistent. It is a consistent study of thought, observation, or experimentation toward the questions of maturation, personality, and emotion. And uh, it is consistent because it, it more plays upon the idea of patterns, and its patterns are going to be quantity-based as opposed to quality-based. Even though both do exist, they, they're they more towards uh, something that's consistent. So the thing is that uh, it's a it's more of a science that could be understood. And for this one, uh, what is psychology? The neurophysiological and related disciplines uh, study of the internal, external, specific uncertainty. These are the, the, uh, the questions of standards, uh, variations in standard, but standards, because you can actually see them, because they're external, originally started as external, uh, they can be understood and uh, experimented upon, modified, and discussed better than the quality-based, uh, the variation that is not understand less that's something to vary. So that's what the primary difference between psychology and uh, philosophy is where both are very important to the human condition and in some ways philosophy is more paramount because it discusses the variation that allows for human beings to be who they are. Uh, but it's less understood than psychology because psychology is uh, discussing something that's a standard that can be understood and uh, philosophy is discussing a standard that cannot be as easily understood because one is varied and one is not varied. So if you have any questions about this, as always, please uh, recheck the previous YouTube presentations and also you can go into the website uh, www.charitiesoflife.com where all the papers that leading up to the discussions are. And as always, uh, if you have any discussions or any concerns, please contact me. Thank you very much. Goodbye.